<laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let me pretend to be serious for a minute. What are you doing, Namaste? What's wrong with you? Um, Namaste, cool, man. It's all, all is all is good. I like that. All is good. Namaste, cool. I'm gonna stay cool too. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Salutations, grand rising, morning, afternoon, evening, all that good stuff. Just cruising, episode twenty-two. Ooh. Sound like Scooby Doo. <laughs> Slightly, yeah. <laughs> Episode 22. Kevlar Kiss, Dr. Love. Peace. My man's got the best hoodie I've seen today. I'm just jealous. I saw the hoodie, I was like, oh. I said I quoting. I said I quoting Kemet, Kemetic Egyptian gods. Say Shu, Heru, Atom, Zehuti, Amon, Mehen. Anyway, you don't know about that, you don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, episode 22, Just Cruising. Today's conversation is quite weird. We're trying to talk about, I was a try, I'm being nice. We're going to talk about PMS and PNS. Right. For those who don't know what PMS and PNS are, kind of make it easy for you. PMS is the premenstrual syndrome that women go through. Oh, give me a second. So it's a. Uh, it's a natural, it's a natural happening for women, PMS. The things they go through before the periods, during the periods, after the periods, and it's it's quite hormonal because there's a consistent, there's a there's a physiological change, there's a mood change as well. So if you ask most women about their PMS, their cycle, they will tell you about it or oh, that when it's like a week to the time or four days to the time they get a certain way more um <clears throat> more intimate more reactive more sensitive more emotional just more more so right generally pms and for every i think from my personal experience for every woman that i know that goes through pms she has it individually different Sure. Individually different. It's crazy, mm -hmm. right? But now I might be speaking from a black person's perspective, but again, I'm a well traveled man, well learned man. I have noticed on a general scale, I say general, more like an 85 15% scale, mm -hmm. is that the women that I've known to have the most painful periods or I'll go through the worst PMS a black woman I've known that on a general scale and now from my point of view as a chemical engineer who works and deals with hormones in foods in hair products in skin products and chemicals like that I know that it affects many people in, in the same in, in different ways Many races get affected too in different ways. Just just by your body cream, your hair products, your toothbrush, wow. the water you drink. Yeah, it actually affects your hormones, affects your estrogen, your progesterone, as well. Affects these things, and you get you get. It's a, it's a whole different topic. I don't want to go really scientific and deep into it because I pause. I try to give the layman's terms of it without mm -hmm. being quite dorkish about chemicals words da, 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 da. but anyway I've noticed that a few hair products affect PMS a few toothbrushes affect PMS a few skin products affect PMS a few of these things affect PMS and pH value as well anyway another topic another day right that's PMS as in Papa Michael Sierra now let's talk about PNS Papa November Sierra as in P N the letter P letter N letter S. What's PNS? PNS is a post not <laughs> Sorry. I didn't think you were going there. I was like, is he going there? He's not going there. He's going there. Go ahead. <clears throat> How'd you go from there to this? Sorry, that shit's hilarious. Premenstrual syndrome and PNS. Continue, please. See my life. 
<laughs> PNS. You right? <laughs> it's so scientific. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because it was so scientific and like serious, and it's like this. Okay. But it is serious. Go on. I'm hurt. Don't be. Go ahead, continue. My feelings. Oh, are you? <laughs> you have <a> PMS. <laughs> well, so now PNS is post nut syndrome. A lot of men, this is the, on, the, on the masculine side, on the, on the man mm. side, a lot of men, straight men, gay men, okay, sorry, heterosexual, homosexual men, transgender men go through this syndrome, right? Right. And it's actually also hormonal too. Mm-hmm. It is. It is actually quite hormonal. Because could you first define what post nut syndrome is first? Because I was about to. Okay, so go ahead. Warming up, Chris. I'm about to warming up. That's what I was born born to to do. Hey. Mm. Okay. (laughs) Right. So, what post nut syndrome is? It's is the feeling a man has for his the person he likes after sex mm-hmm. after not so it's in the word post not post not so now a lot of guys and uh, it's not sensitive but it's sensitive does that make sense I can tell you're choosing your words a lot of guys right like a person, a woman, a man, mm, transformers, sheep, I don't know, whatever it is, right? Mm, right, okay. And then there's an attraction. Mm-hmm. There's an attraction. And the attraction leads to sex, right? After that man has sex with that person, the attraction goes away mm. you, you understand yeah, yeah, yeah. that's post nut that's an after nut it goes away but here's the query though because what I've seen is again from the from the point of view of the women who feel like they were pumped and dumped mm. this is my point so that's, I understand what you're talking that's about pump and dump you get it yeah. You get it. Part of the reason I want you to define it is just you know, yeah. for other people. It's part. It's because from from a point of view, it's pump and dump. So the women who feel like men just pump and dump them, that's post nut syndrome. The post nut syndrome. Now here's what's crazy about this: the guys who go through the post nut syndrome, as much as they've tried to, they don't even know it is. So, they might like her a lot. Yeah, I know a lot of guys. They like her a lot. And then, after they they pump, they dump. After they have sex, they're gone. And even the guys themselves are bewildered Mm -hmm. and going, but I thought I really liked her. I really liked her, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried so hard to da 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 And after that sex is done, they're gone. That's post nut syndrome. People don't understand why they see someone, like someone, have sex and then they go. They break up and then it's over. Post nut syndrome. That's post nut syndrome. And that too is hormonal. It's your hormonal changes that makes you chase that which you are attracted to. You get this testosterone boost, you get this drive get this dopamine rise when you get that attention when you see that thing that you think is fertility that you are drawn to because mm-hmm. because that's the whole point of, of sex or reproduction is basically you're looking at that which is fertile that well that which which seems to be fertile so you want to reproduce with that mm-hmm. and once once the action of that has happened mm. Your brain goes, okay, cool. We have now spread our seed and move on. 
interesting. Mm. I've never heard anyone talk about it from this perspective. Because like, the like people on the internet that talk about these things come from their own point of view or their own experience and they've actually not sat down, sat back and actually broken it down on a psychological, on a physiological, on a spiritual, on a mental level. They haven't done this. So then, what would you, uh, how would you describe the difference between the connection when after sex that that desire is no longer there mm. and the connection where after the sex the connection is still there what's happening on a hormonal level then thank you so that's the beauty of it i had to give the bad part first mm -hmm. right for the good parts the beauty of that is this when there's a connection before sex that connection remains after sex when there's a non-sexual connection before sex after sex that connection remains nothing changes so the post nut syndrome is a minimal is minimal it's not the major thing so example if so i'm going to use me as an example if i i am if i am sexually attracted to a person right mm. after sex there's nothing that person can give to me or deliver to me that's going to keep me attracted to the person. If it's just sex. If it's maybe. just sex. If it's just sex, there's nothing else that, that they can do. That's it. I don't want to see you, hear it from me, da, 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 da. It's just done. The deed is done. Game. Boom. But now, clearly, that's not me because, as you can see, I'm, on a, I'm an intellectual person, so I like to have a conversation with you. If I can't have a talk with you, then mm, it's not happening. So... Mm. That's that's the that's the escape from the post nut syndrome is can you have a conversation? There needs to be for for women to avoid the post nut syndrome, they need to basically have something other than sex to give. Because first impressions last. First impressions count. As a guy, if the first time I see you or I heard about you or know about you is on a sexual basis, mm -hmm. that's my foundation for you. That's very true. Does that make sense? So from a, from a male perspective, if the first time I see you, hear about you, hear from you, or anything I know about you that's just, that is first, is sex first, no matter what you try and do with me afterwards, I kind of only see you as sex first, sex only. So uh, when, a lot of girls, not women, a lot of girls who say things like, men only want me for sex. That comes up when you actually do a background check and you find out, oh, this person that is saying men only want me for sex, what they're constantly posting online or just what kind of message how they they're sending, yeah. how they present themselves is, an, is only from a sexual point of view. So basically, you lead the dance with sex first. The male brain would would see what you deliver first. If the first thing you deliver was sex first, no matter what you put after that, they can't see anything but sex. That makes sense. It definitely makes sense. That's the foundation. <coughs> yeah, that's mm. foundation. A bad foundation is always going to make the house crumble. It's similar with women in a, in a way as well, right? Like when a woman sees you, she puts you in a certain box. It's uh, pretty tough to get out of that. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? If a woman sees you and she perceives you as friendship material, or she perceives you as ah. potentially a lover, like women know pretty much straight off if you're the type of guy they want to have sex with. How would you? Okay, hold on. <clears throat> That's a good one. How? Okay, what qualities? What? What mannerisms would a man give for him to be taught of as just friends on material? Because mm. this is the thing. <laughs> I was going to say, don't ask me. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask no, you. But um, I'm going to ask you because I have, I I, I have asked a few women, I said a few, a <laughs> lot of women, and I go, what is it about 
that person that that is that keeps me in the friends up? I think I would say more beta characteristics than alpha characteristics primarily. And so, for example, I'm thinking I'm trying to think of someone now. The kind of guy, for example, who who will give a woman attention and a sympathetic ear and is very much just available. You know, he's there, he's available, he's he's someone that she knows, okay, if she wants to call him and tell her about some issues she's having or problems she's having with a relationship or something at work or whatever. He's gonna be available to, to, to do that. Uh, and his energy is gonna be more yeah, more I guess more needy. Mm-hmm. Those kind of characteristics I think right. put you in that zone. Like he could be funny, he could be charming and the rest of it, but That's not bad. Yeah, like you're not you're not challenging, you're not sparking any any kind of real attraction in her because your energy is just very kind of safe and very that makes sense yeah I get it I get it I, I get where you come from what what you're saying is <laughs> so what you're saying is right no so the the gist of it more like here's how I put it make it easy I put it in the sense that the women who put men in friends of are the men whose lives are not as whose whose lives are not as interesting as theirs. Uh, or are the men who generally have too much time on their hands. Or her time for him her time is more important than his time, which means that he's not doing anything valuable with his time. Therefore, he has time for me all, all the time. Yeah. The men who aren't doing anything with themselves. Or men who... Who... Don't have the drive to do more. That makes sense. Who don't have the drive to do more, to push more, to get better, to be bigger. Who just content with this. Mm-hmm. Contentment... Friends of contentment break up. Those who are content with just oh I have just this small hut. This is my hut. I'm good now. Mm-hmm. Nah. There needs to be drive. There needs to be willingness. There needs to be we need to be going on, going forward, moving forward. There needs to be more. Remember the whole more and peace thing. There needs to be more. When there is no, when a person hasn't got the drive for more, it makes them less attractive. When a person cannot hold their ground, hold their form, hold themselves, it makes them less attractive. When a person acts like a deer, not like a lion, it makes them less attractive, which is what the prey or predator mindset. What do prey do? They jitter. Predators are just like the calm. That's the thing. If you haven't got your own personal calm, it's, it's unattractive. It's, 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 it's a number of things, isn't it? It's, it's um, like you said, in terms of holding your ground, having the backbone. Like one of the things I notice with women is they respect a man who will stand up to them because they will test you at times, right? And if they see that... Yeah, she tested. Yeah, and if they see that you're going to just take that and you're going to like either react to it emotionally and, and lose your frame or you're going to... Uh, allow disrespect to happen or for example some guys will agree with a woman even if they don't agree like they'll pretend they like something they don't like or they'll do stuff they don't want to do in whichever way showing weakness really because you're not having integrity in that moment all of those kind of characteristics I think make you less attractive and there's times when it's interesting man there's times when I'll disagree with a woman about something and she'll be she'll be angry but at the same time, it's like, I can tell that she's either attracted at the same time or she's sort of intrigued in a way because I've called her out on some bullshit or I've said, no, that's wrong or I've challenged her on some level. Mm. So even if on the surface it might look like, okay, this is not good, actually, it is good because you've, you've demonstrated some character. You've showed you've got some backbone and you've just been honest about what you really 
think. And I find women are, are attracted to and respect men that are like that. Like, they mm. might be like, oh, yeah, he's a bit of an asshole, or he's a bit of a dick. But it's like, my asshole. Yeah, exactly. My dick. But the nice, the nice, <laughs> the nice guy, the nice guy's not, yeah, he's, he's the one like, right. sitting at home on his own, isn't it? Do you want to know why? Would you like to know why? Or do you care? <laughs> I like to know why. Well, go ahead. I, I already know, but go on. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. No, I'm an adult. <laughs> you, you want me to set you up to say the thing? <laughs> say the thing. Oh, my please, chest. please tell us why. See, manners gets you everywhere. Doors open. Your fucking ego is out of control. Oh, swearing on camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I swear it on camera. <laughs> All the fucking time, mate. <laughs> Get over it. Now, fucking. Now, I like that because it's a beauty of it. Do you like to know what? Do you like to fucking know what, darling? It's fucking patronizing. Come on. I know, right? Little shit. <laughs> right. If you cannot stand up to her, you can't stand up for her. Yeah, absolutely. I know, it's awesome. It's, it's, it means a lot because I've always said this, I've always meant this. Men compliment women, women compliment men. We actually need each other yeah. because your strengths are my weaknesses, my strengths are your weaknesses. So we need each other to compensate for the other part that is not 100%. No one is born 100%. Forget what you heard, it's not happening. It isn't, it wasn't, it still isn't. Period, right? Period. Okay. So, if everybody wants to know that their partner has got this, everybody wants to know that in case I haven't got this, has he got this? Yes. In case I haven't got this, has she got this? Yes. That's what people are looking for in a partner. Not just companionship or hangouts. Is if on a day I'm not 100%, can you pull up the ranks and help me out? That's what we're all looking for. In, in, in any way it could disguise itself, that's what it is. So if someone sees that you're not, if, if a lady sees that you're not compatible, you're not compatible. If you're not the one to, you know, back up, back up, you can't back up. If you're not the one to stand up for her, Physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, you're just best being buddies. You know, hi, buddy. I want to go cinema. Are you free? Okay, let's go cinema. It's very non sexual. Just companionship, attention. Yeah, attention. That's it. Just kept in the back for attention. It's fine, that makes sense. Some guys, they, they, they like to mack from their attention zone. They're like, oh no. Friend zone. They're comfortable in the friend zone. Repeat that. They like to Mac, did you say? Yeah, to Mac in the friend zone. And yeah, that's my spot right there. Because they're Mac in the friend zone, and then what they do is like they just crap on every other guy around them. So the ones who like the friend zone, they're the ones that, they're the ones that backbite and talk shit a lot. So they're in the friend zone, but they're in the friend zone so that they can rip on every other person. And they're the ones that if they see the, the, the woman say hi to somebody else, they get very protective, they get very da 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 da, da. they get very argumentative and violent. You're Just, saying they like being in the friend zone? I don't understand that. Not like the, who not, likes being in the friend zone? Sims. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't think simps like being in the friend zone. They just don't have the balls to not be in the friend zone. That's it. And this is the thing I was, I was getting at when I said answer. more beta characteristics than alpha characteristics. One, I think one of the clear dif di uh, distinctions between the two mm. is betas are really um, concerned with what people think about them. So they're, they're always trying not to offend anyone or step on anyone's toes. And So even, for example, if they like a woman, it's like, oh, what if I say something in it? You know, it might make her think of me a different way, or what if this goes wrong? And and they're afraid of rejection, and there's a lot of insecurity there. But I don't think anyone enjoys being in in the friend zone. It's a pretense. It's not an enjoyment. It's a pretense. It's a lie. Every every other woman who has a who has a bunch of male friends, somehow, somewhere, he wants to have sex with her. 
Yeah. So you know the whole trick. Oh no, we've been we've been we've been best friends for five years. Okay, cool. Take your phone out and text him and say, Oh, I'm free. I'm feeling really horny today. Blah blah blah. Wanna come over just for tonight? And then tomorrow it's gonna be back to normal. We'll be friends again. But I just need. I just need some cuddle and some dick tonight. Just for tonight. Just tonight. There's millions of men waiting that text right now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. I'm. I'm not saying. This is the thing. I'm. I'm not <laughs> saying that. Hundreds of millions of men waiting. I'm not text. saying that there's no such thing oh. as men and women being friends. There's. There's loads of them. There are loads of people who have actually not had sex with each other and they're actually very good friends. There's mm-hmm. loads of them. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's a lot more people who would jump on their friends' bones in a heartbeat. There's a lot more women who have male friends that are like, oh, I'm going to jump on train in a second. It happens, you know. Both sides of the fence. We're not, I'm not going to get mad at the world. It just is the way it is. It's just how the world is. People are drawn to other people. C'est la vie. This is life. Cool. You know, no one's perfect. Nothing is perfect about the world. The beauty about our imperfections, that's our perfection, that we're imperfect. Mm-hmm. And it's good. It's good. It means your body is still working. You, you see people and they become attractive. You're still good. You're still working. It's just people need to understand PMS and PNS. That's, it's so true. So simple. Because mm. a, lot, a lot of, a lot of, Permanent damage happens in PMS and PNS. A lot of permanent damage happens. A lot of... So... I used to write meal plans and diet plans for women for for what to eat and what to drink before their periods, during their periods, and after the periods. Mm. I used to write meal plans, diet plans for women to what to eat and drink before their period, during the periods, after the period. It keeps everything in balance. It keeps everything in balance. It keeps balance. the whole keeps keeps your psyche on point because you are what you eat. What you eat, what you drink is very, very important. And it gives you that control because the person you're with does not understand what you what's what you're going on. Men generally don't understand women. Like, I can't say any more than that. Facts. Men generally don't understand women. But you know what's deeper, though? Most men don't even try to understand. Thank you. Which I think is just lame. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I received the blessings. No, I, <laughs> I, get, I, I get that it can, it can uh, especially initially, it could just be like, what the fuck's going on here? But mm, I think to just, to just cop out, and I think the general view is just like, oh, no one understands women. It's just women, isn't it? It's just is what it is. I just think that's a lazy cop out. What's wrong with your period, bro? Like you're gonna be dealing with women all your life. Like why not take a bit of time to try and? Do you think it's generally that men don't understand women, and women don't understand men, or we just don't understand our, not each other, ourselves? That's an excellent question. Because there's a, I, well, I don't think I know. There's a there's a l- general lack of misunderstanding of others because we don't understand ourselves. That's a profound point, and I think there's actually a lot of truth to that. But because to me, I, the deeper you your understanding of yourself goes, a hundred percent your understanding of others comes from that. So, for example, I've found that the more I've got to understand my own. Um, my own character my own diff- different things it could be for example subconscious patterns of behaviour or I- I'll look at something and I'll go okay why am I doing that where does that come from and I'll trace it back and I'll, g- I'll go right back to the root of it and I'll say okay that started here and this pattern began here and so the ability for me to, to apply that examination that self examination then starts to naturally translate into other people for example I could be I could be dealing with someone and they could act in a certain way and I could look at them and go, yeah, one of your parents, <laughs> one of one of your caregivers, acted in this sort of way because I can see the pattern in you in terms of how you communicate with other people, and so you're now repeating that unconsciously, 
and now and again you'll catch yourself doing it and realize oh okay that was maybe a little bit harsh or that was a bit critical so I, I can apply that same awareness and understanding of myself to other people in terms of men and women though I do think you, you, you gotta kind of pay you gotta pay attention man you gotta pay attention and try and, and try and really learn because there's only a certain amount you're gonna get from understanding yourself some of it see that some of it's gonna happen in relation understanding oneself is the first key to mastery 100% once you start because you are on a daily basis basis understanding how you deal with your environment every day that's the beauty of it mm. and one of the learning like you said your parents your guardians you know your protectors what they looked out for one of the one of the one of the biggest things i took from my mom and dad my parents from their life was because i asked them a question i said You've been married all these years, all this time, right? Mm-hmm. Remember I had to talk before. You've been married all this time, and like you are happy, but not in, not in the Hollywood sense happy. You understand? Mm. That real life happy, mm-hmm. right? I know you have disagreements, squabbles, and all that stuff, yeah. But like, what's your secret? Mm. But that's what it is. It's the people who have lasted it for fifty plus years. Yeah. You want to go? How sway? <laughs> ha! <laughs> you understand? How sway? How sway? You ain't got the answers. But <laughs> God. Wait, and it's a, it was so simple. It was so simple, and to today I keep that in mind, which is every single day, they are consistently learning each other. Hmm. Every single day, hmm. it's like every day I've met you for the first time. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Do you know why, though? That is that's your because that is beautiful. Freezing your knowledge of a person is the beginning of the end. Hundred percent. Which is basically, oh, you did this four years ago, therefore that's who you are. Yeah. You're not present. You're not present. Mm. You are living with the with the thought of the past me. Mm. Of yester, yester me, yesterday's me. You're not present. Six years ago, I liked, I don't know, noodles. Therefore, you come with the assumption mm. that I still like noodles today. So, such an excellent point. Everybody that I meet today that I've not met in, in a while, I say to them, like, listen, five years ago, I was doing this, 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 right? Today, I'm doing this, 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 this. I'm not the same person you five years ago. Literally, five, not. five like years your ago, I'm not, same, structure like, like, I'm not the same person no, a year ago. Not. Really not. I'm not the same person I was a year ago. I'm not. So five years ago, you're doing this, 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 this. Today, you're doing this, 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 this. I'm gonna consciously make sure I get to learn you again, like it's my first time actually meeting you. Which is, I know your name, I know your surname, but I don't know your journey. Mm. So who are you? How are you? What's going on? What's been happening to your life? So I'm making a new friend out of you again. That's how That's you make relationships fire. last. Because on a daily basis, I'm learning you. You're learning me. That's and I'm not going to quit learning you just because I've learned you five years ago. No. Mm. I want to get to know you better. That's it. That's the thing. They like it. Because it is never ending. People are constantly changing and evolving. But and if you don't have that perspective like you said you're mm. going to miss it and you're not going to be you're not going to be able to relate on a, on a deeper level remember though what I said about, about the key to being present is the whole the phone thing it's the phone thing is That's the part of it. it is part it's of it it's a big part of it because if we're not communicating making eye contact talking connecting you know spending time together just me and you we're not going to tighten that bond so a few a few things come to mind when you say that mm. that I want to share. One is time outside of the typical environments. If you're living together, yes, it's really really key that you get out of the home and go places because there's a different level of awareness and intention around that because mm. you're, you're specifically giving that person time and it's designated time to that. So you just the quality of the communication, the attention, and everything else is different. You're in a different environment. 
it's very easy to get into patterns when you live with someone. You know, it's very mm. easy to slip into. Oh, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How's your day? Mm. Yeah, my day was alright. Yeah. 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 Mm. And have this kind of surface bullshit type communication, which isn't really real Two communication. Two passages, right? Hundred percent. And so, one of the biggest um, turnarounds for me has been we have this this time together, and it's not every day, but you know, when when time permits, most days, where we'll shit, we'll sit and we'll just share a few positives, and that space where we do that becomes the space where that real that real communication happens and mm. it's happened very organically but mm. it will be there'll be little things like okay uh, there's a few positives normally three and so I'll share like you know it could be something to do with work or it could be this or it could be that but I find in that space then the conversations come up about where we're at and what we're going through and how we're growing and what our challenges are mm. and when I started doing that I realised how much I'd been missing because before that, there would be times where you'd kind of say, oh, how you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah I'm all right. You know, this happened. Blah, blah, blah. But it would be quite shallow. Like, you wouldn't really go into it. Mm. Whereas I find now, with this space of appreciation, which is a positive space, the stuff that comes up is different. It's deeper. And, and the quality of communication is just... just it's transformed completely. Like, she, she, like, watching how she's transformed has been really fascinating. Because she used to be much more problem-focused. Mm. But this positive focus now means that even if she brings up something which is challenging, mm -hmm. she's looking for the positive in it and she's looking for the solution to it because she go. understands how it feels good when you're in appreciation, when you're in, in gratitude. It, it feels, feels good. And once you get used to that, you don't want to go back to the complaining, <laughs> negative focus of most people. So I've watched how with certain friends, she's just kind of gravitated like away from them now. Mm. Or they'll call and she'll be like, oh God, it's like... <laughs> Here we go because demotion. Demotion. Sorry, can I can I inter yeah, interject? Yeah, go ahead. I made I kind of said what I wanted to say. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Should be gone. Oh! <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> that is cool. Go, know, go, go. <laughs> right. I like that. That's so true. When when you start to realign yourself and balance yourself and find your you again. When you start to know who you are, you, that's the beginning of mastery. When you start to elevate and get better and bigger, you are going to piss a lot of people <laughs> off. I know I say this every week because it's not wrong. When you start to grow, you are going, not going, going to piss a lot of people off. When you start to get to know yourself, that's the beginning of mastery. What, what book am I listening to today? Oh, mastery. <laughs> mastery. Mastery. I have that book at home. Good. You know I do. Come on. Yeah. So when... As you grow, as you get better, you you get to know yourself more when you start to appreciate yourself more. Appreciate yourself more. Appreciate what you do so more. When you start, you, that's now self-love. Yeah. You start to love yourself more do more for yourself and when you start to love yourself more and appreciate yourself more and respect yourself more you no longer have room and or tolerance for people who don't respect appreciate or love you mm -hmm. so what you don't do is cut them off no need for that don't worry because what happens is when the bad people cut themselves out of your life it's like the trash taking itself out for, for you. It's like, oh, the bin is gone by itself. Thank you. Simple. But what you do is, there are still people who have value in your life, believe it or not. You don't cut them off. You demote them. If that person is calling you all the time and you need to pick that call up, you don't need to. Who told you that? You can pick if you want to pick up the phone. Just answer if you want to. Don't answer. If you're giving them five hours a day, cut that down to four hours a day. That's it. Just demote the attention you give to them. You take down the attention. If a person is on, it does not appreciate your presence, your work, yourself, you're fine. Once you have self-love, you don't want to be... You're fine. I had a friend that asked a friend this weekend, it's like, do you, do you like to be alone or are you alone? Which one is it? I was like, alone. And alone is alone. It's a big 
difference between alone and lonely. Alone is you are by yourself, but you have self-love and you appreciate your time with yourself. So you actually grow in that solitude. Wow. Lonely means that being by yourself, you are being self-destructive because you cannot stand to be or to face yourself because you do not like yourself. Therefore, any and every time, any and every time you have you time, you don't like yourself right there. I was about to say he needs some self love. So basically, as I was driving, um, a, a, a person that was riding a bicycle just tried to jump into in, in front of me, and he's mad at the world because the green, the red lights became green lights at his own time, and he's shouting, effing and blinding by himself. That kind of person, if he's in his own, if, in, if he's in the room by himself, he's gonna be lonely yeah. because there's no there's no self love there. Of course, it's, there's like it's a bad day, but then it's like. Something's off. That was deeper than that, man. Come on. It is. That was completely disproportionate to what happened. That level of like there you he go. had he had that already. <laughs> like it's, But it's again, it's the alone and lonely, isn't it? Big time. There and, you and, go. and to add on to what you just said, mm. that process of talking about the appreciation. Yes. It's not just, oh, these are good things in my life. No. It's the appreciation there's three different facets to how, how I practice that now. It's like one is appreciating you know your life your health all that kind of stuff mm. uh, the second is appreciating yourself yes absolutely um, and then the third is when me and me and my lady will share something we appreciate about each other yes and so the process build and i've watched it in real time like mm. build self-love mm. Do you know what I mean, even to the point where sometimes she's a little bit cocky now man like part of me's like man your self-esteem is really high <laughs> i'm creating a monster I said something the other day and she was just like, I don't care. And I remember thinking, shit. <laughs> Damn. I might have went too far with this. Yeah. <laughs> like, because she would have cared before. She's grading. <laughs> she seen my black belt shit. Damn. Damn. <laughs> it's good. Keeps you on my That's toes. That's a good thing. But no, it's a good thing. Man. It's a learning curve. really good thing. It's it's like, I've, I watched, once upon a time, she was much more of a people pleaser. So let's say, for example, she wasn't feeling well. But she she had something to do or whatever. She would sacrifice her own like health mm, and mm, be like, okay, no, I have to do it. I have to do. It. And she used to say that all the time. I have to. I have to. You don't have to. You want and to. And now it's different. Now she'll say, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm I'm taking the day off. Like I need to rest. I'm not well. But... And it's beautiful to see that. To see that self love. See right there. That's what I mean by that. That's what. That's how it works. It sounds cheesy, but it's like it's real, man. It's like, not even just that. If she or if she were by herself the whole time, or she didn't have someone with the knowledge like you, there would that would have happened. This is why I said mm. in that in that scenario, you compliment her. Yeah. Because she's good, but your presence makes her better. That's that makes what relationships should be, right? That's what relationships should be. You should be making each other You should be well. making yourself the best version of you. But guess what? That person that's next to you should make you 1% better. That's it. That's the beauty of it. You don't want to be in that relationship where the other person is highly dependent on you. The both of you are supposed to be together to make to the both of you better. 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 Yeah. You come together and elevate. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. That's what the yeah, yeah. That's what we said. Yeah. Yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah. I meant. I got it. I was just Yeah, we yeah. said it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's funny you said I did that, because I've noticed in um today's movies, a lot of gang signs happen today. Like the hero movies say um Black Adam. There was the whole um, pyramid sign. Okay. The whole like yeah, all over. Okay. Throwing up a lot of hands. And signs, yeah. um, the what's it called again? The Black Panther. There was the whole Hadouken sign for the 
Atlanteans or Malokwans or what they call they call them they're doing this fireball mm-hmm. stuff man. Mm-hmm. What's this? Okay, come on. It's your greeting. You do you bro. You do you. Yeah. Your presence makes her better. Her presence make you makes you better. That's the beauty of, of companionship and relationship. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Really but this is. this this happens when it's when it's not about sex. When you understand, when it's not being led by sex first, because when it's sex first, that's all you're ever gonna see, sex first, just sex, 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 and then once sex is done, it's like, oh, there's nothing else to connect with. Post not syndrome. When you said that earlier, you just reminded me. One thing I wanted to share was nowadays mm. there are platforms which really permit you to just have that quick, easy, casual thing and I and I think that's even adding to the same stuff we're talking about right yeah because mm. now you've got the means to like really quickly just meet someone like that hook up with them do whatever uh, and it's all very quick and very disposable like there's no real there's no real connection I'm not into them things so I've never fun really, fact I'm not uh, I'm not an internet dating person I've never used that in my real it. life I, like, no, I don't want to I like, I like people that I like conversation. real, yeah, three-dimensional no. shit. We're not doing that. No. <laughs> uh, it's got to be old, that's why. Well, no, it's definitely part of it. It's definitely part of it. If I'd grown up in a different generation, I'd probably be more open to it, but I'm glad I'm You think so? No, because we're dude, old. no. Here's what I realised. In our... We're old, bro. Anyway, go on. Go, go. Go on. As long as you were born before 2000, you're old, right? That's what they say. <laughs> Boy, I'm very old. Go mm. on. I mean, in our twenties, there were dating sites. Yeah, you're right. There were dating sites. You're right. There have always been dating sites. Chat rooms. And chat. Bullshit things. <laughs> A going black on. chat. Oh my god. <laughs> there were oh. dating sites, but again, we grew up talking to people, climbing trees, doing old, things. Old school. Old school, you know. So used to used to having conversations and. Knowing your neighbors and talking to people and meeting your people, yeah, playing outside, playing outside. So we knew how to communicate with other people. A lot of people today never had that privilege. Mm. So, true. To their eyes, it's alien. It's alien. It's new. It's unfathomable. I don't understand it. I can't grasp the reality of it. That's fine. It just it just means that you need to learn how to communicate with human beings more. Hey, I just <laughs> something happened the other day, and I was like, I've got to tell Kes about this. No. I have to tell Kes. So I was I was at uh, a local local store, and, mm. uh, and I know the guy that runs it. Mm. Shout out to Steve. Steve. Steve's really cool, man. And um, so now and again, I'll stop and just say, Hey, how you doing? We'll chat a little bit. He's big into to weight training. And um, so sometimes we'll talk about that. And he's usually telling me about someone that he's tortured because he's brought them to the gym. Someone and he's just like, tortured. yeah, he was, he was nearly vomiting me. Uh, he's oh. like one of them guys. Like, he, he trains people. And so a lot of people meet him and, and he gets them in shape and stuff. And he's mm. probably going to be a trainer when he gets out of the uh, whole sh- family business thing, right? Mm. So um, I'm talking to him and, and these two ladies come into the store. And uh, they've both got like uh, hijabs on. Mm. And... Um, and both pretty. Like, one of them's st- stunning, and the other one's, I'd say, pretty, right? Mm. So they both walk in, and they're both smiling, and they're like, oh, hi. And I said, oh, hello. And um, they just, it was so warm. Their energy was so warm. Like, he and I were talking, and I just stopped talking. And I was like, hmm, okay. And so I could tell they were, were not from this country i didn't know exactly where they were from i was trying to work it out and i'm you know a londoner mate yeah <laughs> now the, the thing is i was genuinely curious that that's oh what that's chest. the first thought i had it was like they ain't from oh these parts chest. right they were too friendly and the energy was too warm and, and part of that i know is if you're in a big city people tend to be more guarded like it's it's a lot more people in a smaller space and so it does tend to be more of a kind of like standoffish thing standard. right yeah. it's just i think that's natural but it was intriguing to me now if I'd got a different energy from them, I would not even have said anything else. But because I could feel that they were friendly and they were warm and open, um, I asked. I said, I said, uh, I said, excuse me, where are you ladies from? 
Now, there's women who you could say that to. They'd be like, oh, here we go. Another guy hitting on me. And I wasn't, it wasn't that. Do you know what I mean? And they said, oh, they said, um, we're from Malaysia. You must come and visit our country. And I was like, big smiles. Both of them like looking at me like really attentive. And I was just like, oh, this is... This is really nice. <laughs> this feeling and energy is just amazing. Like, I was just, it felt really good. And um, they're like, yeah, it's beautiful. You'd, you'd love it. You should definitely come and visit. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so then I said, Steve, yeah, take it easy. I'm going to make a move. One of them had stepped out. I stepped out. Um, but the energy was so good. And so I was like, maybe I should go to Malaysia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm outside the store and one of them is there and I said, so what part of Malaysia are you from? She said, oh, well, we're sisters. I'm from, I think she said Juhu and my sister lives in Kuala Lumpur, right? So I'm like, oh, okay. And so then the sister comes out and she's like, oh, hi, how are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. And I said, I was just, you know, asking your sister which part of Malaysia you're from. And, um, and she explained where they were from and I said, so where would you recommend to visit? And then she told me about this uh, group of islands and she started explaining it's similar to Thailand. She takes her phone out. It's seven in the evening and it's dark outside, right? And we're in South London, right? She takes her phone out, starts showing me pictures, tells me the name of the place. She goes, look, it's beautiful, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, it really is. And, and then she was like, yeah, you must come and, you must come and visit. And it was, it was just so nice. And it wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to get a number. It wasn't like a flirty thing even. It was just feminine energy. But like so, it was beautiful. And I was just like, oh, what a wonderful interaction. Because <laughs> it was exactly, but it was, you know what I told you about that woman I work with? It was like that to another level, bro. Like you could just feel just the, um, just the warmth. And I don't know if it was because of maybe their spiritual life or whatever, but the energy just felt so clean. Well, maybe it's you. Maybe. You have, you have very nice, common person about you thank you that's fine and it's good because what it does is even the the harshest minds they will, be, they will calm down around you which is a beautiful thing it's a good thing rock on with your bad self like I say thank you sir that's fine yeah, so it's got, it's got to balance it out. It's got to balance, I've bro. clocked that with you. Like, whenever you say something <laughs> nice, <laughs> immediately, immediately, like, the full stop of the sentence is like an insult right, or like... Game, game. Let me give you a game. So, it's called a C sandwich, right? <laughs> You're an asshole. That's what it's called. You're welcome. So, I still love you, though. So, <laughs> here's a C sandwich, right? You kind of, depending on who you're dealing with, you give the, you give the, you give the either you compliment or criticism, right? I thought it was that finger. Go, go. Right. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. You give either the compliment or the criticism, right? So here's how you do it. You go a C sandwich. Compliment, criticism, compliment. Or you can go criticism, compliment, criticism. Whatever it is, you lay one out and then you flip it and later on back again so mm, example I was watching this video on the weekend <laughs> about this poetry right this poet that was it was good poetry good poetry now my man over here is a poet as well right so I sent it to him and I was like oh it's nice poetry but the fact that this poet is reading and he's doing his poetry I'm like nah yeah, know. you said poetry is not poetry if you're reading it off I, your phone. Thank you. My exact right. was like, if you're reading off your phone, it's not poetry because it has to come from the heart. Yeah. And buddy here, what, oh, you, what do you say? Oh, I see. And now I get it. Do you know what it is? So what you're saying is, because my performance was off What you're head. saying is, see? Is, is, that what, guy. is that what you meant? So, am I finished now? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave is like, yeah, boy, you know it. He's still a good poet and blah blah. I'm like, I'm comparing him to you, dumbass. You're you're better than him, cause you speak from the heart. Yeah. So compliments and insults. You see, see sandwich. Like yeah. yeah, I'm saying you are a better poet than this guy, because it's from here and it's from here. You're not looking. You just it comes from you naturally. 
So this guy, as good as he is, is not as good as you. Compliment. And then you have to go, dumbass. Just like, you know, balance the equation. Thanos. Very interesting. I had no idea that's what you were communicating to me. <laughs> Do you know why? Because the last, the last performance I did... I actually did read a piece off of my phone, and so I didn't. In, I didn't think in my head you're mm. referring to the piece that you saw mm. on Insta, which is one that I've done off the head. No, nah, dude, head. you do a lot more off the head. Yeah, I do. I do. do now, a, sometimes saying, I do off the phone, but yeah. Dude, you do a lot more off the head, and a lot of poets today are too lazy to memorize what they're doing. Oh, it takes a while, though, you know, to get it to get it locked because. What, what a lot of people don't realise is it's not just memorising the piece. Like, Thank it's memorising it so you can do it under the pressure of a performance. Thank you. Which is like, it's like seven levels of memory. This is how I Thank experience you. it. I can't speak for any other Thank poet. Thank you. But to know your stuff inside out to where if someone interrupts the performance or like say someone makes a noise which breaks your stride and then you've got to pick it up or say you want to be able to make eye contact with an audience member as you deliver a specific there line you go. or you want to slow down or you want to inject this particular emotion into a line you see you have to know your stuff see? inside out and it's, and it's tough if you're writing constantly to do that so you see so i'm so i'm doing over there complimenting them because it's easy from the outside to go oh i can do that it's so not, do it then. It's, really not. it's not easy. And then you're dealing with your adrenaline as well, and and all that other stuff. Like, yeah, it's it's not. So you see, it's not easy. I appreciate your work, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. I'm not gonna sweat you. I'm just. Like, <laughs> I'm bracing for the. Brace for yourself. Brace for the insult. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait. Any second Ask now. For the phone. Ah. Nah, it's fine. That's good. <laughs> like I'm comparing him to you, dumbass. It's like <laughs> compliment game is different. I'll see it's different. You tomorrow, you my asshole. compliment game is different. <laughs> yeah, see you tomorrow, asshole. <laughs> yeah, he got it. <laughs> Man, oh. I know, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm one of the guys, one of my, my favorite um, boxing students, dude. Whenever he comes in, I just rip my new one every time. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you, dumbass? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. All the time. It's like, that's why you're stupid. <laughs> what does he do to deserve this? I don't even know, because I like him. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like... <laughs> it's because I like him. It's like, I said, oh. Hi, guess. Shut up! <laughs> Don't say a fucking word! If I want to hear you talk, I'm going to stick my hand up your hat and I'm move you in like a puppet. puppet. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love that movie. I was watching that movie the other day, funny enough. The other guys. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Say, like, no! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. What's good about it? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Yeah, but you know. Yeah, I get it. it. I, I, like, people are people are like, I actually do insult them more. I, I give them more. It's people you've been through a lot with. Banner. It's people that you've been, been through a lot with. So you can mm. like someone, but if you've not kind of been through anything, you, you don't, you can't talk. So yeah. yeah, I like you, but you know, dude, hmm, let's go to war first. Then we can. We can banter and throw all, all, all around. It's all good. It's all love. So yeah. In essence, I hope you understand what PNS means now. If you want to avoid the PNS, you need to lead with your lead hand. That means like basically try not to make sex your your introduction. Try not to. Because what's funny about Leading with sex first, it happens on both ends. For the men and the women. I'm thinking of a guy that needs to see this podcast right now. Right. right. So right. now, for okay. I think someone asked me a question a while back. Like, Kes, why don't you like post yourself with less clothes on? Am I a shower? Am I a prostitute? Eh? What kind of you know, what kind of nonsense this is? What kind of nonsense? What kind of, you know, hey? what kind of nonsense this is? What kind of foolishness? No, it, it makes sense because, again, what you see is what you buy. 
a lot of fitness uh, influencers, professionals do do that because they're you know like I'm presenting they're myself as a as, as a, an example right. of. But guess what? That's all you see in them. Fitness. Fitness. That's all you see in them. You will not take them past that level. You don't take them seriously, you think? You won't. What? For a, so a woman I can bench press, that's it. But a life conversation, a life coaching, understanding the human dynamic generally, no. No, she got your, your, your chest out. Mm, thank you. You understand? Ted talk S- maybe. So similar to what you're saying about not leading with sex. Yes, same thing. Same sort of principle. Um, Come on. Topless men that you you are advertising sexual virility. When you are topless and you are doing biceps, whatever, you are advertising to the opposite sex your sexual vir- virility, how sexually available you are, because you are showing to the opposite sex that you have broad shoulders, you have low body fat, you have you know you have broad shoulders, low body fat, and muscles to protect them. And when so when when they get when they are what you want to. When they're vulnerable for eight, you know, for a year and a half, two years, you are there to protect them because you have broad shoulders, big arms, and a small waist. So those factors are in our primal mind of, oh, look, club man, you know, caveman with big club protectors, ha. Huh? Make sense? It makes perfect sense. I yeah. never thought about it that way. But it is, because you, 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 you are selling sexual virility when you have that and then for the and this, this is all mental it's all, it's all the psyches our primal mind yeah 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 and then for the female part of it when you when you have pictures of your of your flat stomach or of your butt or of your cleavage out online like that what you are advertising to those who don't know you is look I am sexually virile I am fertile Look at this. I have space to have child for you. Reproduction. That's what the brain wants to see. Oh, look, she has a big butt. That means her hips can carry child. She has mammary glands. She has cleavage. She has big boobs. That means that she can feed my child. Hmm. That's how the brain works. And this is all the, this is all the primal unconscious. So whichever era we are in, that's how we see things unconsciously. This is why I try to avoid those two parts. I'm not looking for your cleavage and I'm not advertising my broad shoulders. No, there's no, 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 no. We're not doing that because the message here is more than just that. It is. Sex will come and go. But that message we have is more than just that. But once you start to understand the dynamic of how people advertise and sell themselves, you start seeing through the magic. Once you understand the magic, it doesn't work anymore. Come on, for crying out loud, why are girls twerking? Why do you see a lot of twerk videos? Why do you see a lot of, um, oh, with a lot of cleavage? Like, oh, look, I bought new shoes today. Where's the shoe? I can see breast. Where is the shoe? That's the stuff that gets likes as well. And Abercrombie the, and, and Fitch. And the algorithm pushes that stuff up in the feed. Abercrombie and Fitch. How can you go and sell t-shirts in a shop where there's no t-shirts? The models don't wear shirts. They are selling shirts. Abercrombie and Fitch. What do they wear? Shirts. The models, no, the models just wear trousers, topless. You have to have broad shoulders, traps, delts, traps, delts, and abs. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude. Wow. I will come and fish. Look it up. This has been, that's game. You are selling shirts, but your models don't wear shirts. Yeah, but you're using sex. Uh-huh. Sex sells. It does. Boom. Same reason why we use, I say we, but we use models on a car. Because the men start thinking, oh, she's on the car and smiling. She looks sexually active. If I buy that car, I could have sex with her. So he buys the car. Mm. Because his other brain is thinking. 
Yeah. So now, sex sells. But that's the problem. Once you lead with sex, that's all you are. That's all everybody else is gonna see from you. That you are just a sex person. I'm thinking of someone right now, and it's, you know what's interesting? Hmm. We um. So I've got this book called nice guys and players by Ron Wills and he speaks about how men tend to fall into different categories mm. and so there's one category he talks about um, called uh, Mr. Goodbar mm. this is the guy that, that gets women very very easily mm. and women are very drawn to him and he's very sexual and blah 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 mm. he, he however usually struggles in, in holding a relationship mm. together mm. and um, and it's, it just sounds like this dude to a T and what I'm realizing now, having this conversation, mm. it's what you said. It's it's that leading with the sex thing. Yes. And so it's like, okay, if you're if you're that guy, if you're the sex guy, that's gonna, all you are. Compartmentalize. Just what I'm saying. Who's gonna take you seriously as a partner? So yes. it's like, part of him I think enjoys the kind of notoriety and stuff. Uh -huh. But then, then it gets old. Yeah. I say, it's it's the. Is the virgin as a virgin as a virgin boy you are so excited to want to have sex for the first time then you have it okay it's fun you have it again okay it's fun have it again eh. i have to go to work now you understand it's like that understand. it gets old it gets old quick it gets old quick the and that's the thing like once you you give yourself out as this is who i am what i do that's what people tend to see you as first. They would want to, and they would try to see you as more than that, but first impressions last. They would always see that first. Make sense? Mm. Dude, that's it. That is it. I don't know how else I can say it, but, you know. Shaking on. Line popped into my head yesterday. Mm -hmm. Boys chase girls, men chase excellence. What? Where'd you get that from? It just popped into my head yesterday. Boys chase. Wait, wait, wait. Boys chase girls, uh -huh. men chase excellence. Jeez, I don't understand. Please, broke it down for me. No idea. I don't understand what that means. Please, help me. I'm not doing this. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, man? Come no, on. I don't. Well, when you say excellence, do you mean excellence as in life, life or women? Just excellence. Just, just excellence within within themselves, within uh, their lives, their purpose. They chase excellence, not looking for. Because the thing is, like you said, I think initially for for a lot of guys, getting getting a girl is like, oh, it's this big thing. I work with a guy at the moment, bless him, young guy. And you can see he's really like, I really want girl. Like he hasn't got to that point where he's like, yeah, you know, it's cool, but it's not everything. And so it's it's an immature mindset to prioritize chasing women. But that's what that's what young men do. And so there's there's there there are males who I would still say are boys in terms of their level of maturity. Yes. On an emotional and spiritual level. So that's yes. what I mean when I say boys chase girls. Right. Right. Whereas oh, okay. men are at a certain level of maturity when they realise that isn't really what it's about. That's not. Hmm. That's not the priority. Uh, I see what you're saying though. You're right. So it's like. Huh. A lot of times that boys chase girls, they just want sex. Mm -hmm. Hence, post not syndrome. And when men chase excellence, as much as it's about sex eventually, because so be it, right? They're looking for how that person can make their life better. Because in every other thing they do, they chase excellence. Yeah, when I say when I say excellence, I wasn't even referring to women. I meant they're chasing excellence. I know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean. You can't be chasing excellence and everything else and not be putting that in your personal life. That's a good point, actually. It's not going to happen. It's not going to make sense. No. 
it's not making sense. It's like, why would you have these standards and then be like... Mm. I like that. It's good. Hmm. Would you like to add anything else, please, sir? To the PMS, PNS discussion? Is anything, brother? Anything? Mm. Whether... Uh, I think I've sp- I spoke on this already today and I've done it many times before but I think having some sort of daily practice where you are practicing some appreciation some gratitude um, some self love I think it's very very powerful it's one of those incremental things where you might not notice the impact um, massively immediately in fact when I first started practicing appreciation I didn't really feel it I was you know talking about things I was grateful for but I didn't feel that much but over time that that will compound and it's very very powerful i think it's very important to take time to appreciate especially as the mind's got negative bias and uh, appreciate yourself and appreciate the people that are close to you because with that negative bias that the mind has and with the the tendency for us to take things for granted that hedonic adaptation it's easy for the people close to you to to become um, so familiar that that familiarity breeds contempt and you start looking at the things that annoy you about them and not taking the time to appreciate their qualities so in the same way that I think you need to give yourself that appreciation it's important to look at the things in those people around you that you, you appreciate and their, and their good qualities mm. okay you're welcome I was going to say even if they are assholes and I stopped myself and I shouldn't have stopped myself I should have I should have <laughs> wrong with it just get out get out the pub you're welcome go on then mate anything you want to add nah it's been emotional yes yeah, if you need me oh one me. thing I was going to say was uh, with the PNS you advise men to more men and women to ensure that there's more connection than just sex if you want more than just sex maybe you do just want sex right but how about on the flip side with the PMS because you mentioned there's certain foods and certain things and blah, 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 blah. what would you advise uh, women to do to assist them book a consultation I ain't giving you free shit what would you I agree shit I wouldn't even time. I wasn't even suggesting anything free. I was not suggesting free. <laughs> like I said, you know how to find me. Look me up. Simple. Perfect. Yep. Everyone, it's been emotional. Thank you. Yes.